I welcome our chairperson ICC, who is the brain behind this whole program, Professor Patri Deshmukh. She is a professor in the Department of Physics and also the former head of the department. So, Madam, welcome. I welcome respected Professor Patricia Mukim. Madam Professor. Madam is a recipient of Pakistani Award and many other coveted laurels and honors. She is presently editor. She long times a leading English news daily of the Northeast. Madam Patricia is a well-known social activist, writer. Journalist, author. She has been associated with various governmental and non-governmental organizations dealing with issues as diverse as education, security matters, fight against militancy, and communal harmony. Professor Shukumpa Bhattacharya, Madam. I welcome you in this program as an esteemed panelist. Uh, Madam Bhattacharya is a professor in the Department of English, Northeast Hill University, Shillong. Her area of specialization includes gender studies, amongst many other things. As a visiting professor in many international universities, Professor Bhattacharya traveled widely on teaching and research assignments. Dr. Priyaranjan Kumar is Associate Professor and Head Department of Law in Tezpur University, Tezpur. His area of interest includes constitutional law, administrative law, and other current affairs. Whilst in Assam University, he was here for a, around 10 years. Uh, Dr. Kumar was also a member of the Internal Complex Committee, that is ICC. Dr. I welcome Dr. Priyanjan Kumar in this program. Dr. Ibamcha Chanumam is Associate Professor and Head Department of Commerce in Assam University, Difu Campus. Even from the Faculty of Commerce, Dr. Chanu also heads this uh, ICC in our Diffu campus and uh, looks after issues uh, of gender matters. Our esteemed moderator is respected Dr. Joydeep Vishas. Dr. Vishas is Associate Professor and Head Department of Economics. Kachar College, Shilchar. Apart from being a very sound academician, Dr. Vishas is an accomplished author and writes regularly in newspaper, magazines, and journals on issues of economic, social, and political interest. As a political commentator, his Observation and judgments are very sound and clear. I welcome Dr. Vishas, uh, who has agreed to moderate the whole discussion today. I also, wel I also welcome uh, Dr. Shubhit Dr. and uh, Professor Indrajit Sharma. Professor Sharma is head department of physics currently in Assam University. Dr. Shubhit Dr. is from Department of Commerce, Assam University, Gifu Campus. I also welcome our esteemed audience, viewers who have joined in the YouTube platform. This uh, discussion will be live now, and uh, uh, they can participate in the discussion by writing in the chat box. We'll take some questions uh, within the permissible time. 
so beside uh, i will uh, close here but before that i will request our esteemed the chairperson uh patti ma'am to make her opening remarks and then uh, uh, the to the open to the moderator and the panelists thank you one and all and welcome all of मैं and also our viewers for the program this is our small effort because personally uh, at some point of time uh, i was feeling that in the covid situation we have a drastic change in our work environment rather workspace and this gender issues because uh, people were telling us that oh now you people are free so there will be no complaint coming to you and then uh, the, this committee is irrelevant but uh, that was uh, somehow i i i uh, had a second thought in the whole issue and uh, i was not in a, i was not agreeing with them in that point that we don't have any any issue to deal with at this uh, current situation and i had a discussion with other members of the committee that uh, yeah in post covid situation probably we have to redefine things we have to see the issue in a different light altogether so that is how i conceived the program and uh, i i we were uh, trying to find out to whom to contact because we were not uh, very and then i contacted shukalpadi and jodipda and they really helped a lot and we reached madam katishia she agreed and uh, with one thing she agreed just uh, one approach i just wrote to her and she agreed and ibamacha and dr priyaranjan are uh, our own people in the in the community only in the asham university community so they are also welcome because they also agreed readily for the program so without wasting much time i i we are all are waiting for a lively discussion session uh, which will last um, about more or less one hour everybody is busy so we wanted to keep it crisp and short so i hope all the viewers who have joined us in the youtube will enjoy the program and uh, with this i would like to hand over the session to uh, jody bishash who is acting as a moderator who has agreed kindly to act as a moderator because he is a very good debater uh, probably our audience uh, has an information about it so with that i would like to request jayudha to please go ahead with the discussion and again i would like to thank all the panel members for sparing your so much valuable time for us being present here today with us thank you so much
pandemic has most hit this particular sector. Uh, a Deloitte survey uh, carried out, Deloitte, the global joint in the accounting form, uh, Deloitte survey <laughs> showed us that the situation is really, really very great, where seven out of every 10 women, uh, working women, have experienced a negative shift in their working <laughs> So this is the real scenario, and apart from that, when the workspaces have undergone definitional changes, but the workspace itself has undergone a kind of a shrinkage due to the COVID-19 pandemic and a collateral damage. I think, like any other, uh, any other pandemic situations, any other disaster, where always we find that the women pop are the worst hit. This time around, also we have seen the same trend of history to continue. So on with that uh, initial note, I'll go straight to the panel. May I start with Professor Shikalpa? Uh, Shikalpadi uh, will go uh, in a way for the five minutes for the initial take from all the panelists. After that, we'll throw open the discussion. So may I start with you, Professor Shikalpa? Thank you, Jordi. Uh, first of all, uh, I thank uh, ICC Assam University for this uh, virtual homecoming, making it possible for me. Uh, coming to the question of the workspace uh, in the pandemic situation, uh, workspace, uh, a conflict between both space and place that happens both in the private and the public space. Uh, what is very important here is that uh, if, if I start from the place I come from, uh, and the space of an academic institution, there has been uh, reports of drastic reduction of productivity in research as far as women faculties are concerned all over the world. And to come to the question of the complaints that have been received by the National Women's Commission, uh, you will find that <coughs> There is a rise in the number of complaints that have been received because of the manner in which the, the, the circulars relating to online classes and other uh, COVID protocols, the manner in which it has been implemented in academic institutions, making it extremely difficult for particularly women faculty to function. And the domestic space of the home with more members staying at home that space virtually has turned into a place of conflict. The home is no longer a home. And it's extremely difficult to imagine how we find that, you know, uh, the entire issues of, because of the restricted space with the close proximity between the perpetrators of, of domestic violence and the affected, the victims, and it is because of this that you find that uh, the agencies of justice, the agency of uh, you know uh, governmental support or NGO support, there is a total control of the being, and there is a terrible condition of interpersonal, uh, very violent relationships, and it's all over. It is it is very very phenomenal. Uh, it happens always that after a disaster a natural disaster or an endemic or a pandemic, there has always been an effect on interpersonal relationship. But to come to this question, particularly of COVID-19, what we find is that a very hostile atmosphere, both in the, in the, in the space of, uh, of academic institutions or other institutions for that matter, also a terrible decline of interpersonal relationships because of the restricted space of freedom, a close proximity between perpetrators and total closure of any kind of support mechanism that the, the, the victims can actually go to. Now, also coming to the question of you know interpersonal relationships and gender issues, that being the topic of today's discussion, I also bring in the question of the migrant, particularly the migrant uh, women, you know, because of the various, uh, because they're always in a flux and more vulnerable and a total denial of not only loss of jobs, but also denial of all kinds of measures of, you know, sanitized or a kind of a hygienic, 
living because of the stigma. In India, we always have a I think Professor Shikharpa is having a network issue. Uh, <laughs> the of class, caste, patriarchy that operates at every level, from the top institutional level down to the societal, to the yeah. Yes, Jaydeep, I was talking about the migrant women, and also wanted to bring yeah, yeah, the question of the LGBTQ community. You see that it's a you know, a terrible kind of, uh, uh, you know, social stigma and uh, because they are, you know, associated with more intimate uh, workspace, restaurants, bars, uh, and let's say uh, the healthcare system, because of this intimate relationship, there's a direct, you know, effect of COVID-19, the kind of social and stigmatic exclusion that these communities of people experience. So I think there's a serious decline of human values. There's a serious decline of interpersonal relationships. There's a total breakdown of law and order. And in the name of, uh, in the name of uh, response to the pandemic, with the serious sheet of funding. The connectivity is getting even worse. Uh, uh. Uh, Professor Shikalpur, can you hear us? Hello, Professor Shikalpur, can you hear me? Health and you know, uh, you know, gender-related development to the issues of the pandemic, where women have actually suffered because of this. That we need to seriously look into these issues of gender issues in COVID-19. Okay, go ahead, Kisya. Yes, Jadip, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear you, but uh, your voice is uh, cracked. Yeah. Uh, but we could get you, actually. I mean, uh, we could get you. We could get long and, and long and short of what is said. Yeah. Uh, Professor Shigalpa, uh, it's better if we could just get back to you a little later. By the time, just hope that the network uh, improves a bit. There's a real digital divide. Uh, the Northeast is deprived of many counts, and the information superhighway that was much talked about uh, has actually not uh, come up yes, in this yes, part of yes. the world. <laughs> so, well, uh, may I now go over to uh, Dr. Priyaranjan Kumar? Uh, if you are fine with you on that one, Dr. Priyaranjan Kumar, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, over to you. Are you audible? Yeah, yeah, you are very much. You are very yeah. much. Yeah. So really, it's a privilege to me that for the second time I am saying to Ma'am uh, Patricia Mukhim, Ma'am. Once I saw her when uh, she arrived to Tejpur University campus and the council hall, I saw her speaking. And really, Ma'am, today I have been privileged to share this platform with you and to have an academic discussion. I really am grateful to uh, Assam University, ICCL to invite me on this occasion and share some of my views, though I am, I can say, uh, illiterate on the issue of gender because I am not a woman. But ideologically, I am a product of a woman. And with this note, I try to share some of the feelings, some of the problems they are facing in today's world, the crisis which has called uh, and uh, it doesn't know any boundary. The crisis of, you know, the, the COVID-19 crisis and the lockdown which have been imposed by administrative authorities had gender impact in terms of workload, a reduction of economic opportunities, Increase in the incidence of gender-based violence, creating a kind of a fear, 
stigma. And even though the government has tried to create an environment with the distribution of food and the products, but yes, what is the nutritious quality of the food? Right of a pregnant woman, lacking woman, whether the food which was required to her was provided during this crisis was in question. And particularly, this question is raised for the rights of the domestic workers, rights of the migrants. And let me, I'm agreeing with what Sukalpa Bhattacharji ma'am has raised on this issue. Ma'am, even there was a no record with the government that how many social workers and migrant, migrant people are on register. And therefore, I praise the government that at least in 2021, the government has taken this initiative to launch five plan, five pan India survey on migrants and domestic worker. Now, as a being, you know, uh, uh, a student of law, I would like to say that there is a very close nexus between law and society. As and when the change occurs in society, the law is required to be changed. And when there is a new introduction of a law, according to society has to be changed. What I mean to say that, that whenever there was an industrial innovation, whenever there was any scientific development, whenever there was any change in the tradition, custom, according to the law has been changed. Even when there was a crisis, like, you know, uh, earthquake, the law has came to actually, to actually provide a rehabilitation mechanism to all those persons who have lost their you know, life, right to livelihood. In the same way, when this COVID-19 came, there was a change brought in the law. At least to control the human behavior, to control their how they should behave in this pandemic situation, to create a control over the work distribution mechanism, which has adversely impacted upon the economic resources. And many women, I can quote, as per the International Labour Organization, the inequality between the women and the men in the world of work that have worsened during COVID-19 situation. And ILO has said that it's going to be continued in future also. It's a very uh, amazing to, you know, and very difficult to digest that only 43.2% of the world working age women will be employed in 2021. What about the rest of the women? And more, you know, uh, interestingly, in uh, uh, the economic uh, economic survey report, which was uh, made in 2020 and 21, it was presented in the Indian Parliament, and the Pan India Workforce participate, participation rate uh, among the female was only 26.5 percent, compared to Men participation that was of 80.3 percent. Now see the inequality between you know, economic resources. Apart from, I again go with uh, Sutapa Bhattacharji, ma'am, as he has raised about the question. And even the Joydeep sir has also, in the beginning of his remark, he said about the uh, change. The nature of workplace has undergone a change, and it's required to be so, because when this uh, the law on sexual harassment of women at workplace was built up on the basis of Justice, late Justice J.S. Verma report, who was a participant when he has delivered the judgment in Visakha case. So on line of Visakha case, this act of 2013 uh, was framed, but at that time it was not taken in sense that what will happen if such COVID-19 situation which we are facing, it will change the scenario of workplace. Right now, what is the workplace? During the COVID-19, your home was the workplace. Now, at home, how you're going to define? Because when the workplace was uh, structured under the Act, it was structured on the basis of infrastructure within the present premises. It was structured on the basis of the relationship that in the course of employment, 
now everything has undergone change if when a person is working from home it means a means of communication was adopted that was the internet sources so there was a all probability of com- you know commission of a crime through internet sources cyber crime and second there was a all time interference by the family you know work so women who was working earlier the working women who was working earlier you know before covid 19 they were doing their homework home you know classified work and then go out and do the office work uninterrupted by personal affairs personal family affairs now the situation is they have to work from home manage the official work at the same time they have to manage the home task also but without any regulating code of conduct when the government has asked or any the institution or the companies they have asked their employees including the women to work from home have they issued any code of conduct what if any sexual harassment activity takes place at home will the employer be held responsible where to file a complaint what would be the process and really i am telling you that during this covid 19 if something has been you know suffered a lot that is the access to justice crime has been committed women has been harassed and procedures has been done but how to complain where to complain and what would be the mechanism can the online like we are not deliberating deliberating upon the issue because this facility was provided at my institution and at the same at your end also whether the domestic worker whether the migrant individuals they have been provided this facility do they have this uh, uh, what is their you know entire income and what is the part of the income which they are sh- sharing on you know having such kind of facility it's uh, remaining no in dogma second is that that how to investigate this matter how to call for you know um, uh, material on record as of an evidence so all this question was raised and still these are unanswered so uh, if i'll move further i can also say that uh, if you refer to the ncrb report this uh, national crime report bureau this was the government of india you know institution who is responsible to take note of number of crime rate which has happened till now on the uh, on the basis of special local laws uh, uh taking into consideration the sexual harassment act 2013 that was not incorporated they have included uh, you know uh, outraging the modesty of women under ipc and even special laws like uh, immoral trafficking act this has child you know talking posco has been considered and data was provided at least some data has been provided but regarding sexual harassment of women at workplace data still there is a absence here especially only with respect to uh, ipc some some you know uh, uh, 354a was covered but the in that enactment that how many person has been arrested under this special act no data is available because this act is not only applicable upon the work you know persons who are working in any um, company even it is applicable upon the educational institution so how many how many complaint has been filed by a student against a teacher a student against some you know some someone else no record is there these records are available only in the respective individual educational institutions only if at all if one anyone wants to have such those data you have to apply through the right to information act right and this are uh, uh, i I'll, i'll go through with the nrc uh, data also sorry ncrb uh, data now no doubt because of the you know lockdown it has impacted upon the crime rate scenario in india there is no doubt because every everywhere it was locked down people are not coming on the road so it will have ultimately it will have an impact but if you go through with the number of incidences incidences which still happen you know it was recorded in 2020 it's alarming it's alarming like i can quote over here as per 2020 you know report submitted by ncrb the murder with rape in 2013 it was 283 it has been slowed down in 219 but still 219 cases has been occurred 
as per the government record in reality how much i don't know but as per the government record it's 290 what if about the abatement this covid 19 situation has raised the incident of committing suicide the tendency to commit suicide so mental stress and who are the persons who are who have undergone a mental you know stress the person who are qualified the person who are eligible the physically you know they are having empowered to earn money to earn you know income and you know provide subsistence to their family members they failed because of the situation which has been you know uh, provided and this the case has been raised miscarriage whether the government has provided a protection to women
uh, in the new form of this new form of uh, exploitation and the discrimination during this COVID-19 pandemic. And at the same time, uh, regarding the another issue that uh, Madam is there because Madam is related to, related to media. So how to uh, uh, what to say redefine the new form of uh, what to say portrayal of uh, women in the in the media. Uh, in this COVID situation, when we see uh, in the advertisement, a new form of uh, culture has been shown in the uh, paid media, paid advertisement. And we have to look into it because it affects in our uh, workplace and uh, it gives a chance to our opponent. What I'm saying opponent is the male, the, those who belong to uh, male sovereignist uh, group okay, to say something against the women. So these issues are uh, uh, needed to be discussed when we have this type of panel discussion. Uh, at the same time, I would like to add, uh, without wasting the time, uh, that uh, you know, in the normal condition, normal working condition, means that when there was no COVID-19 situation, uh, that you know, uh, it is same in case of advanced countries or least developed countries or developing countries. You know, the whole this women. Uh, you know, face oppression or exploitation in three forms. I do feel that. That is uh, women as a women. Uh, that is uh, on account of gender. We all know that women as a women, we, uh, you know, we sometimes face discrimination and oppression. Okay. So then women as a worker. So sometimes we, whenever we define the women, uh, we said that women belong to a homogeneous group. No, I don't feel that women's, women do, do not belong to a homogeneous group. It belongs to heterogeneous group because the workers should be divided into different forms. And uh, another third uh, uh, issue which I would like to mention is that uh, that women as a, a citizen. Here, what I would like to mention is that uh, about the attitude of the state, the attitude of the government authorities, or attitude of the, uh, what to say, uh, just like the authorities of Assam University or, uh, or any other NGOs, and uh, how they are behaving to uh, resolve the issues related to uh, the women, as uh, our friends and Sar had also mentioned about the you know laws related to women. As a chairperson of the ICC, uh, you know in Ifu campus, also I I, I do uh, seriously feel that uh, that how our uh, you know government is reacting to different issues which are related to women in the COVID nineteen uh, uh, situation. Okay, so. Uh, and we also know that, uh, as uh, other panelists had mentioned, uh, regarding the, uh, what to say, gender inequality, gender gap, and the job laws. Yes, we all know that there are many reports. Uh, that report was issued by our National Commission of Women. Report was issued by uh, United Nations also. So job laws is a very, very uh, important area. So uh, in the workplace, yes, I do feel that there is a new form of violence, new form of oppression, new form of discrimination that we have to redefine in today's panel discussion. Over to uh, Zoe Tipsa. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chianu. Uh, you have been uh, fabulous in the time management. Uh, our, our real good professor from the commerce. And now... Yeah. Uh, We'll go across to uh, Patricia, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, you there? Patricia, ma'am, are you there? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, ma'am, we okay. a lot of things can impact. Actually, uh, we started off with uh, uh, workspaces vis-a-vis -vis the gender rights and gender issues, but uh, the way our panelists have contributed to the uh, collaborative uh, uh, intellectual thoughts on the issue, uh, now just it has gone on to an expanded horizon. So there exactly, I would like to put, ma'am, uh, with big was. Thank you very much for this invitation. And uh, see, I'm not an academic, so somebody who introduced me as professor is completely wrong. I'm just, uh, you know, a, a, a media person. And uh, we were most affected by COVID-19, the Shillong Times, last year, had to close for three days. We are the only newspaper in the world that had to shut down. And why we had to shut down is, again, because we have what we call these traditional institutions. Okay? They took a decision that we had to shut down because 
uh, a machine man or two and a driver had tested positive. There was no need to actually shut down. But you know, patriarchy is so dominant in these traditional institutions. And then there's also this rivalry, this attempt to shut the voices, you know, the voices of the media. So we uh, actually uh, have the distinction of being the only newspaper that had to shut down for three days because of COVID. Now, people have spoken about uh, the definition of the workspace. Home is not a workspace, but you know, we, we take so many things from the Western world. We adopt too many things from the Western world. And when the Western world decided that we are going to work from home, we also said, yes, we'll work from home. So we had to redefine home. And can you imagine if you have a home with only three rooms and um, if the male member of the family considers it more important for him to work from a better space, then the woman has to shift to the kitchen. There were days when some of our staff had to work from their kitchen tables or from their bedroom or, you know, even from some balcony somewhere. So when when we talk of, uh, of COVID and gender, you know, the sad thing is that the gender concerns were put on the back burner during COVID. People forgot about gender concerns and we all went on with our work as if uh, work was too precious. Uh, and because I, I speak from ground realities, I'd like to say that, you know, there are some professions that are more, uh, that employ more women than others. And what is that profession? That is the nursing profession. Without women, where would you have nurses? So when I visited hospitals during COVID, and I spoke to a few patients, you know, there were male patients and they said, doctors hardly visit us. They just give a list of things to do and not to do, medicine to take and not to take. Who are the ones who are really caring for us? Were the nurses. But then a lot of nurses uh, contacted COVID as well. Some of them were pregnant. Some died of COVID. We, in, in India, we do not yet have data on the number of nurses who have died of COVID. We have data for doctors, mind you. And why? Because there are quite a lot of male doctors. But nursing is a very, very gendered profession. And therefore, we don't have a data on how many nurses actually succumbed to COVID. And to me, this is very troubling. Um, then we have COVID has brought on a huge economic stress. When a low-income household goes through this economic stress, what do you think gets put on hold? It's the women's health. It's access to health care that's put on hold because everything else has to, has to proceed. The woman's health can look after itself when everything else is settled. Then uh, when I walk around, I find that there are so many women queuing up for water from the public taps. Why? Much more water is spent during COVID because of the lockdown. There are so many members at home the whole day. So much water is spent, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, on the whole, there's so much water spent. And who brings the water is the women who bring the water home. So these are things we tend to forget as academics because we live. We also live in sheltered spaces. Let's admit that. Uh, so COVID has actually widened the gender divide so much more that than we can begin to handle it. We'll have to go back to scratch and see how we can we can look at these issues. Uh, then I visited Negrims here. I think all of you know Negrims. It's supposed to be the equivalent of AIMS. You know, they have a, a lot of nurses on contract. And you know how much is paid? We have paid a total of 19,000. That's 19,000, no casual leave, no sick leave, no nothing. And they serve several hours more a day than any of us work. They serve about 14 hours a day. But nobody really cares about all that. Then uh, people have spoken about the rise in domestic violence. You know, uh, I'm sorry to be a little state specific, but in our state, we did not even have, since last year, we 
we have not appointed a chairperson for the state commission for women we still don't have a chairperson so people have been keeping on hold their complaints everyone has spoken about the rise in domestic violence why has domestic violence risen you live in small little spaces the man because of the lockdown can't go out has no access to cigarettes and to liquor and and burdens himself on the woman you know there is there's mental violence there's physical violence there's verbal violence and it's really really pathetic and i come from a state that's matrilineal but you have the highest number of female headed households in this state because abandonment divorce are so easy and these women carry the burden of bringing up their children you, in a matrilineal society children are left with the woman now i have spoken to some of these women they have just one mobile phone they have three children and um, only one child can do online class at a time can you imagine that situation so you know when we when we live a middle class life we don't really understand what happens at the grassroots and the government no government no institution has tried to help these women to get even an additional phone to help their to to enable their kids to go to school and then i live right next to a crash you know a crash is a place where parents can keep their kids and then go to work that crash was closed so you can imagine there were university teachers who had covid and uh, it took them very long to recover but they were hounded by the university because the university said you have to have online classes some of these women uh professors have small children you know and while they were giving their classes the kids would come and disrupt i'm telling you that it 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 is really chaotic you know this work from home is very chaotic and while some people say that this flexi timing and uh, you know the schedule can be things can be rescheduled that has helped women in some way i think it's helped a very small percentage of women um so i think that uh, the policy response to covid henceforth must go through the gender lens otherwise we will not be able to address the concerns of women and if all the efforts we have put in so many decades to bring in some amount of equity and equality will bear no fruit now and will be you know will be cancelled out Oh, thank you, ma'am. This was the right note uh, on the issue that whatever we achieved over the years in the matter of gender equity and more particularly uh, equal access and equity in the workspaces, uh, that has really uh, been devastated by this pandemic. Uh, and a lot of issues have come up from the initial takes by the four of our panelists. Uh, these are all relevant issues, no doubt about that, but we have not left with much time to dwell at length. on each one of them but we definitely to be trying to touch uh, uh, almost all the issues uh, so to begin with uh, some of you have already told us esteemed panelists that uh, it's a it's a it's a balancing act i mean uh, the women folk have been at the receiving end in making the balance between the job and the domestic chores uh, the space which they already had a very little at home that is called the shop now may i may i go to uh, i think uh, professor shikalpa is not there she is still having that issue may i go across to shikalpa yeah 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 i'll just saying that uh, to make a balance between these two and and i have got a very interesting uh, uh, set of statistics with me which says that one in every four one in every four working women in india does have a child below the age of 14 uh, rather does have does have at least a child below the age of 14 now uh, we all understand that uh, how much a child is dependent on the mother and the mothers now have to uh, make a balance uh, what perhaps uh, dr chanu was referring to uh, between the between the between the profession and the domestic uh, domestic compulsion i would say uh, rather than domestic reality so now uh, how to really uh, go about balancing that thing and in the past few months and maybe a, a, in a year and a half we have seen the worst sort of thing the professor sugar box Uh, how do you really uh, try to address this issue? A quick take on that activity. The big issue leads a long lecture, 
but a quick take on that uh, i'll pray for yeah I, i was trying i was trying to be more critical on one issue that how the covid-19 situation has been utilized by institutions and our patriarchal ideological agencies to actually marginalize because it is basically a distortion of power dynamics that happen both outside the home and inside the home and therefore the home never remained a home it was a battlefield but the respite that women used to get working women and now this unpaid domestic labor the care everything has been seriously imposed and just think about it even in countries like australia have some alert machines in in grocery shops so why it is because all because women have been put under control all the time they are very in close proximity with the perpetrators so therefore they cannot reach out to agencies of justice and this is a serious problem that is why i said that in professional field it shows a sharp line of professional productivity among women this balancing is is a very difficult task but to bring in issues of you know gender gender issues i think we are also not talking much about the lesbian gay transgender queer community how seriously covid 19 has affected them please remember that they work in specific sectors such as restaurant entertainment and also uh, you know uh, care giving some of them are also nurses and because of the stigma as it is they were poor i mean they experienced poverty and now with this added covid 19 situation it's a tremendous kind of a breakdown of uh, uh, let's say you know human values uh, and there's nothing to reach out to them and earlier i did mention i don't know if you heard because of the net of issue the the tremendous the terrible case of migrant women pregnant women and why the space of the home both among lower middle class working class there is a data which shows that there is rise in the buying of alcohol beverages during this covid-19 whereas there is a sharp decline of women calling health centers okay a, a, a delhi based ngo gave its uh, uh, its data i just came across that and also i came across the world health organization a uh, global ethics unit which gives this kind of a co- common phenomenon operating across countries both developed and underdeveloped so you can find that this balancing is a tremendous uh, challenge and this online classes that uh, patricia mukim was mentioning about it has actually uh, it has been used by, by
basically it is uh, uh, reserved mainly for uh, what to say highly educated and the computer savvy group so our uh, women uh, say uh, though uh, majority of the women uh, do not have uh, uh, such type of facilities but i do feel that in the near future there is a possibility of creating more employment uh, as far as our Dr. indian Chano, economy actually, Dr. Chano, can I interrupt for a second uh, actually yeah. the, uh, the joblessness for the women uh, in the in the in the labor market has largely been in the sectors uh, which are informal and, yes and exactly participation in the workforce is mostly in the informal sector and as you know informal sector has been receiving a hit for quite yes, some time exactly. and when the pandemic is a is a is the ultimate blow exactly so exactly see any kind of revival of the informal sector so that so that women can get back to their work places see uh, in the uh, there are few cases i will say the case studies right so uh, many uh, many young entrepreneurs basically the women have been immersed in the last few years during the covid-19 uh, pandemic have you seen and uh, at the same time most of the universities have also started a different type of approach means that a special emphasis on the entrepreneurship and the skill development so it means that after two or three years i think more and more employment opportunities may be created but the question is that the question is that how our society will react as i have already mentioned in the beginning of my deliberation that we are living in a patriarchal society so we we behave in a different way and the women uh, are always portrayed as uh, as a sex object or something different so how we will uh, what to say react in that case but one thing i would like to add again here madam uh, scholar madam has also mentioned and the sir you had already mentioned in the beginning regarding this uh, uh, sir work life balance okay sir here i would like to mention something here as an academician means that all the academician should redefine the new term that is a workplace uh, what, what is the workplace so we need to redefine this term second is my appeal to uh, mukhi madam and those who belong to media means that there is the need to overs such issues again and again and to give awareness part is to the government government should take up different policy for the women basically women and the who are having children uh, who are having child below 18 years of age including me i'm having a child below 18 years of age so government should have a very constructive as well as a different policy so that we can produce better human resource in the future to protect our country so this is my submission okay uh, i'll now i'll now uh, go across to uh, dr priya ranjan uh, you already mentioned about uh, the access to justice Uh, actually is being derived at this now in a worse situation post the pandemic and the issues like what dr chamil just mentioned that we need to redefine uh, work space itself and you also mentioned uh, you also mentioned the 2013 act which you feel doesn't really capture the realities in the post pandemic situation when the work space itself needs a redefinition now do you think that a legal structure in india can really respond to that Yes, sir. I always believe that law is a tool to you uh, know to counter the behavior. I think somewhere our uh, voices, you know, on is key point. Okay. So what I, what I was saying that law can be seen. Law is a you know uh, law is a tool to bring social transformation. and i believe that that uh, you all will agree with the introduction of legislation to provide equal opportunity in economic sector to provide equality social political as well as economic equality legislation was brought out by the government now the only question is regarding its effective implementation law is there but effective implement implement to what extent it has achieved the goal of you know constitution which has let down in this preamble and you know various provisions of it now regarding defining the workplace say it's if you if you, if you can go through the articulation of uh, you know ugc 
University Grant Commission Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal uh, Sexual Harassment of Women Employees and Student in Higher Education Institution Regulation 2015, which was uh, made on the basis of 2013 Act. It's, uh, you can just read about Section 2 of the Act and you'll come to know that the workplace means what? That the infrastructure of the higher education institution, including the department, the organization, undertaking, establishment, which was owned, controlled, or substantially you know, financed by government or private sectors. Even it includes sports, stadium, sports complex, and the third part, C, you know, clause C, it includes any place visited by employee or a student arising out of or during the course of employment or study, including transportation provided by the executive authority or, uh, sorry, uh, 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 executive authority for undertaking such journey from the place of study to the higher education. Now, nowhere the word home, which you know, in now in regular practice, we all are using work from home, work from home, this word was not included. Now, if we'll just take some example, I'm just quoting some illustration. Suppose a student who is, you know, uh, uh, attending classes from home and because of he is claiming that he does not have a, you know, a proper uh, 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 network, you know, proper network to attend the classes. So what he did, he just switched off the video and he was shown that, okay, he was present in the class. Now, if the teacher is asking him, switch on your video, can you assure that the student was very sincere and punctually sitting on the table, keeping books in front of him or her? No. Teacher does not have a control over their classroom. Teacher does not have control over their students. And this is not, right now what I am speaking, it's not on the gender issue. It was applicable on all the students, whether they are male, they are female. Now, among the female, if they would have been in the physically present in the class, they could have applied for various, various, you know, applications for their own reason. Now it's not coming. It's not coming. Does it mean that proper medical facility, which would have been provided by the educational institution, had been provided to the girl, the student? No. So I, what I mean to say that even when you are extending the you know work culture at the home place, I think some code of conduct is required and that can be regulated. I can suggest that that if you conduct a code, like you know, if a student is appearing in the class, then you you, you know uh, there's a code of conduct. How you have to behave with your own uh, friends, how you have to behave with your you know teachers, how you have to you know uh, wear yourself. Means if there is a uniform for this you know school that has to be worn and the student has to appear before the class. Why not the same code of conduct was included when the student was asked to attend the classes from home? I haven't found that means there was a code of conduct for the students. No. Why not there was no code of conduct from the because yeah. there was a clearance. I just you know interrupt over here to say that there was a number of issues which was reported in the newspaper where the female employee was forced to see some I know uh, uh, nuisance things by the employer. So when you are providing a platform that was not within your control, I am talking about this cyberspace. This was you know, technology based you know, equipment which has been given in the hands of the, even the student also. Earlier we used to say, student don't play with your mobile, keep away from you know, yourself. Hmm? And fathers, they were keeping a you know, mobile phone away from their uh, students. Now we are compulsive enough because of the situation. Now we are providing you, take beta. This is a mobile you have to you know. Do every activity through your mobile phones. Can you regulate the behavior of your child? Who is responsible to regulate the behavior of the child? Teacher, student himself, herself, or the parent? I think some interrelationship responsibility has to be created. That was absent right now. That is absent. Even the UGC regulation also it is absent. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Priyaranjan. Uh, it's a really startling uh, revelation. Uh, that uh, sexual harassment, which uh, is so rampant in, in India and even abroad, uh, in the workspaces, has now got a new dimension, thanks to the virtual connectivity. 
uh, is on account of the work from home, quote unquote, the work from home culture. Uh, we'll ask on to uh, Patricia, ma'am. A lot of things to really hear from you. Uh, a whole day to be, uh, you know, uh, given to you, actually. I wish we could do that, but our time is really short. And you also said that you have got uh, business back home after this. So very quick take from you, ma'am. Uh, the media, as always, uh, people said that we have got a lot of expectations from the media. And the media hasn't done it right. Media hasn't done it wrong. I mean, this is how uh, the media is really uh, is made accountable in some cases. Now, less of that, even the, even the judges of the Supreme Court in this country. Now, media, do you think, ma'am, the specific question to you uh, has actually captured this whole issue that we are discussing today in the right earnest? Ma'am, your uh, microphone is uh, muted here. See, I can't speak for all media. As far as I personally am concerned, we took up a lot of issues related to women, their difficulties, their problems, because we needed to look at women hawkers who were, you know, living a hand-to-mouth existence. They live from day to day. And during the lockdown, how did they succeed? How did they, you know, how did they cope? Did, did government even care about all them, all these women who are hawking and who are sell, uh, selling vegetables on the pavement and so on and so forth? We we brought out all these. We brought out the lack of health care facilities, uh, the fact that women, uh, you know, decided that they were going to deliver babies at home because they were too scared to go to hospitals. And as a result, you know, when you don't get institutional delivery, and when your delivery is difficult, the child dies or the mother dies. And there have been a lot of such deaths. In fact, uh, in Meghalaya, we had a study last year between April and July. We had 877 infant deaths in those many months. Can you imagine? So we brought out all this and it became, it became a national concern, actually. So, yes, the media has a lot to do. But let me also remind academia. You know, this is my great concern that universities and scholars don't engage with the media. You know, we need articles from people who've done research on various issues, especially on gender concerns. We keep, you know, we keep hammering that we're not getting enough material from universities. After all, you are thought leaders and you have the luxury of thinking, but there's no contribution so you can't blame the media alone. You know, it's a, it's a two-way traffic. People have to contribute. Then the thinking starts. Then government also gets energized to work on a particular direction. Otherwise, where do we get the material from? And if we write something that's not based on data or research, then nobody is going to take us seriously. So when you blame the media, please ask yourselves also what's, you know, I mean, what's your contribution to the media? Media doesn't work in a silo and, and doesn't work in an ivory tower. We, you know, we need sources to feed us. And we cannot just take stuff from the internet. We need something that is close our home. If we are operating from Meghalaya, we need uh, a lot of data, a lot of studies from the whole of the Northeast. So that is how we... And of course, I agree that... Uh, you know, media has the responsibility not to uh, not to sort of show women in in uh, in a manner that does not befit them. There are a lot of uh, media channels, for instance. In fact, I, I want to ask this question from all of you who are scholars. All of the I wonder how many of you watch these uh, TV serials. They all demonize women. You know, all the women there are like gundis. I call them gundis. So how do we allow this? And it's so set in the minds of the average adult Indian male that these women, the whole day, they only scheme, they wear good clothes, they even sleep with their lovely saris on. It's such a bad portrayal of women. At least in the newspapers, we don't do that. But other media does it. And we don't even have media critics, you know, these days. 
So my, my, I would call upon all of you, all of us rather, to raise our voices on these sort of uh, television channels that show women in such poor light. So that's really a sharp note to uh, end our program uh, with Patricia. And I'm sure, <laughs> apart from the three academics that we have on the panel, a lot more are listening to us uh, watching this program. So I uh, appeal yeah. from... Uh, uh, so if, if you'll allow, I can I can interfere and you know I would like to just you know uh, response yeah, on yeah, the yeah. earlier question to which the uh, Patricia ma'am yeah, has already responded. Because people always interfere. <laughs> Go ahead, uh, thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, I just want to appraise over here during the COVID-19. If all the citizens of India have been appraised about the number of incidents which was happening on the COVID-19, the people they are dying, the people who are getting affected, these are all approached to all the citizens as of information through media only. Yeah. Even the yeah. government they have yeah. acted, even the, the police personnel, or we, we can take example now all the uh, um, uh, health sector, health service providers, including nurses, doctors, and all the staff member. Their creativity, their activity has reached to us and we have been benefited only because of the media. I can add over here that in Patna, uh, there was a complaint which was made by a 22 years old girl against three uh, uh, you know, a staff member of uh, City Paras Hospital where she has accused these three persons for sexually assaulting her mother who was admitted she was of 45 years of age and she was critically in a critical condition affected by COVID-19. Now, when she was uh, uh, sexually assaulted by three, three persons, she raised an alarm. Though uh, uh, her mother died there, and the next day only she died, but the uh, daughter, she raised the alarm, but because the uh, hospital authorities, they were very powerful with economic, in terms of economic connection, etc., her voice was suppressed. But thanks to media, the live you know, Patna television, they have casted her you know, interview. And uh, Nevita Chha, who was you know, who was a working president of the Bihar Mahila uh, Samaj, she told that the person, the authority of the hospital authority, Mr. Kumar, he has given interview in media that was derogatory remark which he has given against the woman, against the, even the female who has died, her mother who has died. Therefore, this was only media because of which the National yes, Commission yes, of uh, Women, Patna, she that's came that's in that's that's and the cognizance has been taken. So thanks right. to media and yeah, negative yeah, aspect is always there. Being a human being, if you can take institution, you can criticize anything. Even the media can be criticized because of the role which they have played. But yes, positive role always be appreciated. I, 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 want, I want to say one thing, one, one more thing. Yeah. See, uh, as media persons, we also acted as intermediaries between people and government. Personally, I had given a lot of suggestions to government, for instance, to start this war room kind of, uh, you know, uh, center where you can see exactly what's happening, how many hospital beds are available, which hospital has oxygen, which hospital doesn't have. They didn't have this in the beginning. Of course, some people uh, have a problem with the word war room, but I can't help it. And then, you know, a lot of information was put up even on our own personal social media pages. So it, the information, the, the idea was to send out as much information as possible. And then, you know, there is this problem of women not having access to technology, not having mobile phones, and therefore remaining uninformed even about the do's and don'ts of COVID. So, yeah, technology is a double-edged sword, as somebody said. Right. So we are now extremely close to the finish. Actually, the, the appeal that uh, Patricia Ma'am has like, uh, played out here, that should get magnified through our program and should reach intended uh, the group, the academics. Three of you are here, and I'm sure more are really watching our program. The message is write a bit more in the in the popular media. Uh, maybe they don't catch good points for promotion and placement, but they really do a wonder in reaching out to the people. Uh, the panelists, uh, the esteemed panelists, we have really made the show uh, and, uh, and, and really a fascinating one. Uh, Dr. Priyaranjan Kumar, Dr. Chanu, uh, Professor Shikolpa, which I wish to hear a bit more. Uh, the, the internet has really played the spoil sport. And of course, Patricia Ma'am, your presence always gives a, a, a fresh vibration to the whole, whole empire. 
So, and of course, the organizers, the internal complaint committee of Assam University, Professor uh, Osri uh, Deshimoko in particular, and her entire team who actually have made it possible. And thank you very much, the viewers who have been with us from all over the world. So, uh, I mean, we'll definitely meet sometimes somewhere uh, on similar shows. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Uh, just uh, prefixed uh, professor with you actually coming from me. He is very much a professor. <laughs> One who professes is a professor. Madam, despite your extremely busy schedule, you have given us time and more than what we expected. Uh, it is already run over by 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, but uh, in uh, as uh, very nicely uh, pointed out by uh, our moderator Dr. Jadip Bishas, that uh, it has been a very wonderful program, and we wish we could have you more. Uh, we could have given more time to you, and uh, hopefully in near future we'll be having more such program. Uh, and uh, all the panelists, moderator, thank you. Thanks a lot. Namaskar. And also feedback, feedback in our uh, YouTube platform is, has been extremely encouraging. Uh, those who have joined uh, have come uh, with very good uh, words of appreciation for this program. Uh, there was no just such specific question, but uh, more of appreciation, and they are really uh, inspired and they have enjoyed the program. It is an engrossing discussion. So I thank one and all, and uh, before I wind up, I, I think uh, our chairperson, esteemed chairperson, would like to say something. Yeah, just a uh, few words. It was extremely uh, interesting discussions, and uh, the time was too short, what I felt. Uh, but uh, anyway, I would like to thank everyone for joining. And uh, the main motto of putting it live on YouTube was uh, more people will be able to access it, not even not in a I mean, lifetime. But they can access it later also yes. because these discussions are very very important and we have to push people uh, to force them to think actually in in these issues in general we keep it hush hush and then nobody discusses and uh, you just uh, i mean this is an issue of some particular people only to discuss it uh, looks like that but it is not so that is why we wanted to put it uh, live on youtube i hope uh, it will be viewed by uh, we didn't have many viewers right now, but I hope it will be viewed by many one and lots of questions will come up. And I hope we'll meet in near future again. Thank you all. With that, we would Thank like you. to stop today. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you and good night. 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 Thank you. Thank you.